Do you know, Northumberland must be the last bastion of rural countryside in Britain, here amongst the fells, the valleys, and where the North Tyne flows. People here eat in a strange way. <coughs> <It's> like, oops! <laughs> this, this is what they eat. Not as it is down in the succulent south, a luxury. Here it's quite a common dish. In fact, it's so cheap and so plentiful, and people are so bored with it, I couldn't find a real Northumbrian person to cook me one. But I, what I did find was a Viking, a Viking, who is called Eben. In fact, I should call her Deep and Crisp and Eben, because that's who I can remember it. And she's a great pheasant plucker. Difficult to say if you've had one or two. And as a Viking who's been raping and pillaging for a thousand years, she is going to cook something for us that demonstrates her understanding of, of, of Northumberland. Particularly because I don't feel very well today. I've got a cold and all that. What are you going to do with this? I'm going to skin it, take the breasts off, uh, which I'm going to cook in mead. Mead. Now, yes. you are talking to me in a nice way there. What is actually... I know you can drink it. What is mead? Let's have a glass. It's, it's a honey-based drink that was actually brought over by the Vikings. Ah. Plug so, for the Vikings. Yes, yeah. yes. This is what they fired themselves up on when they when they charged on their cricket club tours yeah, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Anyway, start plucking the pheasant. Okay. And, I mean, it is true that what I said, isn't it, that um, the locals are not desperately keen on eating it, say, in your hotel or restaurant, because it is so such a common sort of dish for them. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, we, they they usually sort of eat the lambs and beef and things like that, but. Um, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the nicest sort of meats you can get. That's yeah. right. So and, tender and... And good value too. Yeah, look at all this. That's what it eats, you see. This is why farmers are a bit cross with them, because they eat all their little... The last supper. The last supper, that's right. That's right. <laughs> OK, well, you carry on plucking away there. We all know what plucking is about. Um, we've actually got to get on with some real cooking. Now, what you should do, and I've pinched Deep and Crisp and Eben's recipe here, you get these lovely fillets of the pheasant, and these have still got their shot in them, probably upset some people. What I used to do in the olden days in my restaurant, to make things really authentic, I used to have a little tray of split shot and put it into the dish at the last moment, just in case they thought they were home-reared ones. Anyway, these breasts of pheasant have been marinated for how long, Eben, in mead? Um, 48 hours, just in mead, just to keep it really simple, because it's... Uh, as you probably already know, the, the Vikings and the old sort of Northumberland way of cooking was to try and keep everything simple. And also, they just didn't need to disguise any, any, any real sort of meats. Any, any know, genuine any flavours. flavours yeah, yeah, with anything, because it was so fresh. Right. OK, well, look, let's get to do some cooking. I mean, the gas is on over here. Whiz round in one of your steady, slow walks, Richard. We'll find ourselves over here by the stove. Even it's up to you to tell me what to do. We've got the gas on. Have we got which yeah, is one? It's on, it's on, it's yeah, it's on. Well, we've already, Richard, close up in here if you please. We've already sweated off or melted down or softened a few onions. What do we do yeah. next, Eben? Uh, add, the, add the pheasant breasts now. Right. And just sort of blanch them off. One in there. No seasoning at this stage? Not at this stage, no. no. Right. Just sort of uh, close the pores on it and. Let that, which is kind of the maximum that, firing speed? That's it, yeah. Let that sizzle away. Let them get brown or golden on both sides like that so that they seize up and seal. Richard, if you don't mind, close up and then organise a wibbly-wobbly shot so that we can come back to that a little later on in the cooking stage. And certainly this mellifluous amber liquid will make all the difference to the dish, won't it? Sweetness and light it is. Good word, too, I might add, mellifluous. What's next? Uh, then you add some double cream to it. Right. But first we're just going to cook the alcohol from the meat off. Take the breasts out. Okay. Serve them up on your dish. Spilt it all over the place, but that doesn't matter. We'll just wipe those dishes in a moment. That's right. Cream into there now? Yep. Yeah. It'll be quite generous. I mean, how, I mean, this is your invention, isn't it, this dish? I mean, this is a, a Viking Northumbrian marriage, I suppose. Yeah, it's so simple, but it, it, I, I prefer simple dishes that are really tasty and nice. It is tasty and yeah, nice, actually, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It's, uh, and if you think this is a very, very rich dish, I mean, if it's too fruity and too sweet to go with game, think about pork and apple sauce. Think about venison and red currant jelly. I mean, the, the thinking behind this dish is perfectly OK. The savoury meat and the sweet sauce. Do you want to wipe those over onto the table, my darling, and then we can um, yeah. have a little taste and see how it all, all comes out. Right. This, as usual, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If this isn't brilliant, I'm cutting you out of the programme. Oh, OK? <laughs> 
it should certainly be tender enough now. Well, I think that's marvellous. It is gamey and sweet. You know, I'm always worried about dishes that have honey and cream in them mm. because I feel it's an excuse for not cooking properly sometimes. But, mm. I mean, it, you did reduce it all properly and all nice, and it really does work. It's a lovely mm -hmm. melange of mm. flavours. Yeah. Here's to you, Very my nice. darling. Viva Northumberland. Cheers. And up with the Vikings. Definitely. <laughs> it's gone.